Okay. Uh, Chris, can you start the video, please? Okay, we can see there are some filmy mm. adhesion band behind the uterus. The uterus uh, have some adenomyosis appearance. We have a left ovarian chocolate cyst, and as we can see, the rectum stuck on the retro surface. The ovary also stuck on the uterosacral ligament and the retro surface area. Okay, now we are performing. Uh, we we call that the intraperitoneal approach. We are still in the intraperitoneal space, but now. I'm going to enter into the retroperitoneal space in order to separate the ovary away from the uterosacral ligament. The reason for us to enter the retroperitoneal space is first of all we want to identify the ureter. You can see the ureter is here. And the second most important reason is because if we want to maximally preserve the ovarian tissue. We don't want to advance some ovarian tissue along with the peritoneum. We don't want to sacrifice any ovarian tissues. Also, okay, so this is the, I will call that a step one procedure, dissect the ovarian fossa. Now we are between the ureter and the uterosacral ligament, which is the so-called Okabashi parietal space. We have to take care not to injure the uterine vein here. Okay, now we are going to enter the paravesical space, which lies anteriorly to the uterine vessels. So now we are trying to find out where are the uterine vessels. Now we can see the uterine artery here. and also here near the uterus and here we may have communicating branch between the ovarian vessels and uterine vessels so we have to be very careful now i'm trying to detach the rectum away from the retro surface so the first thing i'm going to do is to enter the so-called perirectal space i'm not going to detach the rectum directly but I'm going into the left perirectal space first. Perirectal space is the space between the uterosacral ligament and the rectum. So I'm going into the perirectal space first and then try to dissect all the way into the rectal vagina space. As you can see here, my left hand is grasping on the uterosacral ligament. Remember the principle fat belongs to rectum. So we are going along with the fascia and leaving the fat to the rectum. Now we have already entered the rectal vaginal space correctly. Now we detach the rectum away from the right uterosacral ligament. Now the posterior cul-de-sac was totally opened and we are going to suspend the ovary so we can have a clear view. Now we enter the right retroperitoneal space in order to isolate the uterosacral ligament and removing the endometriosis lesions over the right ovarian fossa and right uterosacral ligament. You can see the right ureter is here. And if you are looking very carefully, you can also see the right hypogastric nerve. Now we are removing the endometriosis lesions over the right uterosacral ligament.
Now we are approaching to the posterior uterine wall or the so-called torus uterinus or the retrocervice area. We follow the curve of the ovarian ligament not to injure the communicating branch between the ovary and the uterine vessels. Now we are shaving the DIE lesions over the posterior uterine wall or the so-called torus uterinus down to retrocervice area. We are getting very close to the right uterine vessels, as you can see here. Now we continue to excise the DIE lesions over the torus uterinus. We suspend the uterus to make the uterus more inverted. Now we isolate the ovarian ligament further to make a complete separation of the ovary away from the uterus side wall and the uterus sacral ligament. Now the left ovary is totally free. Grace. 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 Uh, second, second part, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Second part, right? Yeah. Now we are starting ovarian endometrioma cystectomy or the so called enucleation. I'm not using any scissors, you can see. I'm using two forceps with very careful blunt dissection. I intentionally by half the chocolate cyst wall so we can very easily identify the correct dissection plane between the ovarian endometrioma wall and the normal ovarian tissue. We have to perform the cystectomy in a very careful and gentle manner so we can maximally preserve the ovarian reserve. We try to stay as close to the cyst wall as possible. Any tissue attached to the cyst wall should be pushed back to the ovary. Now we can see another small endometrioma here.
again stay close to the cyst wall. Now stripping of the other half of the cyst wall. You can see I'm performing the stripping or the cystectomy or enucleation very very slowly and carefully and try to stay as close as possible to the cyst wall. We have a follicle here. Reserve the follicle to the normal oran tissue and we have another endometrioma here you can see I'm not using any sharp scissors and I'm not using any energy I only use the blunt dissection, very very careful blunt dissection and if you are staying in the correct tissue plane the correct cleavage plane you see there will be no bleeding almost no bleeding there are still uh, little piece of cyst wall okay now we have complete the cystectomy now we are going to approximate the residual normal healthy ovarian tissues I am not using any energy to make hemostasis the suture material is 3O vicryl suture which is absorbable Do not pull the string too tight, otherwise we may strangulate the ovary and impair the ovarian blood supply. I incorporate some tissue from the base so we can prevent the hematoma formation. Again, do not pull the string too tight. Our purpose is to reapproximate the ovarian tissue and do not strangulate the ovary. Okay, we have completed the ovarian tissue reconstruction, reapproximation here. 
now we suspend the ovary then we can approach the ovarian fossa very easily now we are going to remove the fibrotic tissue which also contains some endometriosis lesions above the ureter and the uterine vessels Now, in this area, we have to take care not to injure the hypogastric nerve. So we are now trying to separate the hypogastric nerve away from the uterosacral sacral ligament. Okay, now we are removing the uh, endometriosis lesions over the left uterosacral sacral ligament. I like to use monopolar energy you can see my left hand keep the tissue tension my assistant also helped me to keep the tissue on tension so when I apply the unipolar energy and when I'm cutting very precisely just between the normal tissue and the fibrotic tissue I can easily separate the fibrotic tissue away from the normal tissues, like this. Now we are approaching the ritual service and the torus uterinus area again, from the left side. Now we are going to excise the torus uterinus and the retro service DIE lesions along with the uterosacral ligament lesions. In this area we have to be very careful, do not cut too deep, otherwise we may penetrate or cutting into the endopelvic fascia. If we have fascia defect here, we may induce future enterocele, so be careful. But if the DIE lesions invade all the way into the end endopelvic fascia or even the vagina, of course we have to cut into the vagina and perform a partial vaginectomy. Now we still have some endometriosis lesions here and we are going to remove it, but be careful not to injure the run the, uh, the uterine vessels down below. Now we complete our posterior DIE excision. Okay, now we are going to deal with the rectal DIE lesions. There are still some adhesion between the rectum and the right 
uterus sacral ligament. So again, we enter the right perirectal space, separate the rectum away from the right uterus sacral ligament. Again, fat belongs to rectum, so we keep all the fatty tissues along with the rectum. There are three ways to remove the rectal DIE lesions. The first is shaving, second is disc excision, and the third one is segmental resection and restomosis. Today we are going to perform a shaving technique. The first step is to remove the perirectal fat. I am continuously using my instrument to palpate to feel the margin of the DIE nodule. Now we are still removing the perirectal fat, but if we are cutting too deep into the muscle layer, you will see there will be some bleeding vessels appeared. And if we see bleeding like this, then we know we have already cut into the outer longitudinal muscle layer. So be careful. Okay, again, instrument palpation to figure out the margin of the DIE nodule. We are cutting the outer longitudinal muscle. I am not using any rectal probe, but as you can see, my left hand keep the tissues on very good tension so I can quickly using the cutting current of the monopolar I can differentiate between the lesions and the normal tissue now you can see the system is also very important to keep the tissues on tension so by traction counter traction it will be easier to differentiate between the normal tissues and the fibrotic DIE nodule. You can see some chocolate content from the DIE nodule. Okay, we continue our shaving procedure. We are cutting the outer longitudinal muscle. I'm using the monopolar cutting current and with short burst so as to minimize the thermal injury to the residual healthy tissues. And now I'm using sharp scissors to make the cleavage plane between the muscle layer and the underlying inner muscle or mucosa. And again, it is very important to keep traction and counter traction. with sharp scissors cold cuts and instrument palpation to feel is there any residual DIE nodule If the DIE lesions invade deeper into the inner circular muscle or even to the mucosa, we may need to get into the bowel lumen and transform our shaving into a disc excision.
Now we are approaching the proximal part of the DIA lesions. Make an incision. Try to find out the correct cleavage plane. Try to find out the junction between the nodule and the normal tissues. We can still feel some hard nodule underneath, so we have to make a new incision line here. Again, traction, counter traction. Monopolar cutting current show burst. For the bowel lesions, do not use the blunt dissection. Shock dissection is much safer. And we should try to use the energy minimally. There are still some part of DIE lesions here. We still have some deeper nodule. Okay, now we find out the right tissue plane here. Now we complete the rectal DIE shaving. We are now performing the leakage test. We put some water in Kudisak and inject some air into the anus to check if there is any bubble coming out. Okay, no bubble. So we confirm that the rectal mucosa is intact. We put some iodine inside to make further disinfection. 
and now we are trying to identify the margin of the muscular defect. Now we are going to close the muscular defect. We have to close the muscle defect transversely, otherwise we may induce the rectal lumen narrowing. So we are now putting the stitches over the left angle of the muscle defect. This is the lower margin of the muscle defect. Now we are grasping on the right angle of the muscular defect. We make the suture of the right angle. This is one O micro suture. So we make stitches put in the stitches through the serial muscular layer. Okay, again, identify the inferior margin of the muscular defect. Dissect more to make it tension free. Now we start to reapproximate the muscular defect. Using this one O vicarious suture continuously. And be careful not to puncture inside the lumen. Dr. Sun, another five more minutes. Okay. I think it's almost finished. <clears throat> Okay, we are now going to finish the muscular defect reapproximation.
Now we are using bipolar energy to make hemostasis and to destruct the potential residual DIE lesions over the posterior uterine wall. Now I'm putting my fingers inside the vagina to make a finger palpation to check if there is any residual endometriosis lesions over the vagina wall or the retro surface area. And we can also check if there is any endopic fascia defect. Okay, I think then that's the end. Okay, we've so finished wonderful our video and sharing Dr. Soon. Yeah.